All right, we're live. Kyler, for the audience that doesn't know you, feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Kyler Vick. Um, I've been doing backyard stunts since I was 15 years old. I'm 28 now, so it's been a while. Um, grew up in West Jordan, Utah, and I'm still living in Salt Lake City now, Utah. And uh, yeah, I'm just here for a bad time, not a long time. It's getting gnarly. <laughs> So, okay, so I want to start this off by saying I saw you from when you did the collab or interview with Steve-O, right? Nice. And because I came across on my feed and I'm like, you know what? Let me do an interview with this guy. And I don't know if you've seen any of my other interviews, but I was super stoked when you responded. And it, I was like, oh, this is really cool. But um, so, okay, so you remind me of a lot of different YouTubers, or not a lot of different YouTubers, I should say really just one. It's Houston Jones, right? Oh, and yeah, yeah, I follow him. Uh, yeah, I know, I know about that guy. Never talked yeah. to him, but yeah, that guy's fucked up. <laughs> but <laughs> so like, are you. Yeah, 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 I was gonna say, but that's like very hypocritical. Um, it's just different. Uh, it's different and it's not. Continue what you're gonna ask first before I get into what I was gonna say about what he does. But well, I was gonna say there's one where you I'm I'm not gonna say exactly what you did, but I think you're gonna know what, what how I say how I word it. You took uh, a nail and you took a hammer, and yeah. then it was That's a part of your leg. Mean. It was a part of your leg, and it yeah, yeah, it's attached to a part of my of my upper leg. That's a fun party trick. That's not as doesn't hurt as bad as it looks or the idea <laughs> the idea of it, it's probably the most like jarring thing you could suggest to anybody um i don't know maybe i just have like a different uh capacity for pain but like i do feel pain like anybody else i'm sure as does houston jones but there's like a a place you can go mentally when the time is right when you're when the cameras are rolling you can like put aside all other fears or consequences and you just kind of accept it and you can like push through it. You know, you're not going to die. And you know, since I've done it before, I know what would happen, what happens after. And, um, it, yeah, it, it's pretty fucked up what I do and what I've done. Uh, but I'm very comfortable with a lot of really gnarly things now, which probably isn't good. Well, okay. My question is, when I saw that video, that part, like that specific video on your page, because I started looking at your page, when I saw it, my question is, was it the skin or was it the, the sphere? It was the skin. It was the okay. skin. That's why. Okay, that makes sense now, like, what you're wondering. Uh, I should let you answer the, or ask the question first. But it was the skin, which it's it's a good pinch, but it's not um I think anybody could really handle it. It's more like mentally disturbing rather than physically. I've done a lot more painful things in my past than that particular stunt. But that's that is one that stands out to people. The other day I actually had some kids come up to me. Well, not kids, but younger dudes that were like, Yo, are you whatever? I, I've seen your videos, I saw and then they said that specific video like, i've seen that video before how does that feel i'm like you go home and fucking try it out i don't know it's a doesn't feel great but it's not bad okay well the video for me that got me right and and let me tell you this not much gets me if at all right mm -hmm. i'm one of those people like i've seen it all i've, I've watched yeah. jackass i've watched every one of them and mm -hmm. it's it's like after a while it's just okay you know guy does this even the testicle even the even the i'm sorry part of your upper leg even yeah. that thing didn't really bother me that much right right, right. what got me this is a bit strange that it got me was the barbed wire trampoline no oh, that, that one got you i think it was just the idea of jumping into something that's that is going to stab you and yeah. that makes sense how did you set that up because that seems like a lot I I don't know how you did that. Right, right. So I I have friends out in Virginia who do backyard wrestling. They've been doing it for about seven years now, and that was a contraption that they had already built as like something to throw each other onto for the backyard wrestling, which is insane in itself. But at least there's like a crowd. You're you have like a purpose. You're you're wrestling somebody. 
I went out there um, to go film some stunts with them and hang out, which I've been doing for a while now. And I, I saw the trampoline. I was like, I just want to jump onto it. Like, no crowd, no wrestling match. I just want to jump onto it to see how it feels. And what better way than to get a 10-foot ladder, take my shirt off, and jump headfirst into this barbed wire trampoline. Um, I should have known better that my hair was going to get stuck. You know, I probably, if I was smart, I would have tied my hair up. But that was probably the worst part, was just, like, laying there, being stabbed, and literally stuck by my head, uh, waiting for my friends to get me out. But yeah, I didn't have to set that trampoline up. It was already built. I'm sure that was a fucking pain in the ass to to have to put together. But yeah, I don't know. I did not think that one would go as viral as it did. That one, that one keeps uh, keeps coming around. I noticed on Twitter and sorry, Reddit, Instagram. Well, I think what got me about it is the fact that it's something that i knew was gonna like you know it's going to hurt you it's not like you know you're falling from a high height where it's like it might not hurt that much or it might not and it's not gonna feel as bad or you're not gonna die there's no right, reassurance right. you're jumping down it's just gonna stab you and right 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 i think that's what it is i think it's the heights with just getting punctured but i mean either way that it was definitely something for sure. Well, yeah. What what uh, what particularly got you was it like the blood at the end, or you're not no, really I'm, serious about blood. No blood, I I could care less about. Like I it's said, just, I've seen all the, I've seen every form of blood you can imagine, right? right? Like, I mean, the internet's a big place. I've seen you know as well as just personal experiences. <laughs> yeah, know, I used to do wrestling. People bleed all the time or mm -hmm. get hurt all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, funny story about that. I remember this one time, like the kid's nose was just bleeding from here to here, and the ref like wasn't calling it. And like at one point, it actually did drop like from the kid's nose onto the oh, other it was kid. Dangling. Okay. Or, like the no, the blood was like dripping like all the way down like his oh, okay. thing. And at one point, eventually, the ref did call it, but everyone's like, "Wait, what?" Because I guess his back was turned to the ref. Um, then okay. there was another thing I heard about that I didn't see, but like your his the kid's elbow apparently went from here to like inwards. Okay. Right during match, I I never saw it, but That's pretty rough. Maybe like what it's called. Yeah. Was um, it hyperextended or did it to snap? No, it like it it went inverted, like how your elbow usually is, like how it usually yeah, bends, yeah. like opposite of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I mean, like, did it it just hyperextended out that way, or did it break? Yeah. Like where the where the bones broken? I, I don't know, because again, I wasn't that's, there. So. Oof. That that's a but that's I, a heavy one. Yeah, well, I could only imagine how that feels because, like, even bending it a little bit too much now mm -hmm. sucks. But back to like a topic that I mentioned earlier, right? When I saw your video with Steve, because that's I'm sure you got a lot of messages about that, or you got a lot of people saying, like, hey, I saw you because of Steve. That's yeah, where yeah. I saw you from. You know, I awesome. saw it because I follow him, and all of a sudden I see him do an interview with you, and I reached out. So how did that work? Because he, he said he reached out to you in the video. So, so, I, the, okay, we can go back. We'll go back a little bit from the beginning of when I first met Stevo. I was sixteen. I went to one of his stand-up shows way back in the day. Before um, a lot of the clubs now, like stand-up clubs, you have to be um, twenty-one. But this one was a uh, you could be any age apparently, and I'm pretty sure I I saw. Steve-O's junk when I was underage at this club. But anyway, I met Steve-O and over the years, year after year, I would say hi. I'd be like, hey, like, can you kick me in the nuts? I, I do some videos, whatever. And we've just kept in touch over the years. So he's known who, who I am for a long time. And uh, my buddy Vinny works with, with Steve-O on the podcast. And that's kind of how we were able to link up was through my friend Vinny. He saw that tree jump video I filmed last year and was like, holy fuck, like, I, I want to, like, ask him about that stunt. And so recently I, I met up with him uh, for my buddy's wedding, for Vinny's wedding. And I saw Steve-O and he's like, dude, I've been, I love that video. I've been wanting to interview about it. Let's do it. And so literally like a week later, we met up in, in California because I happened to be out there shooting this uh, ghost hunting video with, with Zach Ass, actually. And yeah, it was it was a quick little interview. It wasn't like I'd love to do a podcast with with Stevo to like really like dive more in depth of like what we do. But um, yeah, I guess he's been wanting to talk to me about that tree jump for a long time, and we just the right things aligned, and I happened to be in his neck of the woods. So 
I don't know. It, it it is strange to have somebody that you've looked up to most of your life give you like recognition and like praise for what you do. Cause like obviously I looked up to Steve O with like my stunts and like what I wanted to do with my life. So to have somebody be like, yo, like bravo, that like means a lot. Yeah, man. I I I know what that's like. I mean, ever since I started doing the podcast, I've mentioned this a million times, but how many drinks do you have? You just keep out pouring out like a different drink every time. Oh, I have a, uh, I have a Celsius, Celsius that I've been yeah. sipping on, and then uh, Lacroix gets some water. Yeah, Sorry. no, I just saw two different colors, and I'm like, ones, yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah, already yeah. sipping on the Celsius before, like after I was working out, and then I grabbed this one just before the the interview. Yeah. Sorry, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and it, yeah, but um, that's what I was saying. Was like, I mean, now. Because when I started doing the podcast, like the first guy I had on was somebody that I used to look up to, or like not look up to, but like I, he was a self improvement guy, he had like 3.4 million subs, and five minutes he responded. I've told that story a million yeah. times. Like I emailed him, and like I didn't expect him, but in five minutes he responded. And then yeah. very recently, I had Julian Dorian, I went to his studio to do it, right? And he had, I don't know if you've ever seen the YouTube short where it's like if Putin wanted to launch a new, here's why he couldn't um have you i don't think i don't think so it has like 40 something million views but it's it's um i mean either way he makes a video like i i knew who he was and i would always watch his videos and all of a sudden i had a mutual guest on for both of our podcasts and i guess it was somebody that he knew very well and next thing you know a dm that i sent him eight months ago he responds to and he's like yeah, sure. I'd love to come uh, message me in a few months. I messaged him in a few months. He's like, message me in January, message him in January. And then he's like, all right, come down to Hoboken this Saturday. I'm like, sure. Nice, and nice. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. And I, I loved getting to meet him because it, must be and every game, it is, it was very surreal because I recorded it in his studio too. It's like yeah. a Joe Rogan type of studio where it's like if you're a fan of his, like you know, almost like Steve O's studio or yeah, studio. yeah, yeah. I know. I've see- been. I went into that van not too long ago, and I was looking around. I was like, "Damn!" So this is where he, this is where he records his podcast. It's a lot smaller than you'd think inside of that van. Like they really like everything looks a lot bigger on the camera. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's it is a very surreal feeling because like I've seen that guy in that apartment and like in the exact curtains that he uses for every video. And now I watch back some of his videos. I'm like, damn, that's, I was there. Like, it's a, yeah. it's a cool thing. It's a fun thing. And I mean, I don't like to put people on a pedestal by, by any means, but mm-hmm. getting to know somebody that you were a fan of for years or for a while, even, or you've heard around it, yeah. it's a cool experience. And when they tell you, they're like, Oh, I'm, I'm a fan of what you do. It's like, Oh, you know, you feel yeah. it's a funny feeling, but I mean, so you also know, you were saying that you recorded a video with Zach S which well, yeah i mean what i was saying was i was in town um we recorded this ghost hunting pilot thing which is still in the works and then that's when i also filmed that uh interview with steve but i've been friends with zach ass since 2017. we filmed a, a tv show on mtv called too stupid to die um and it came out late 2018 it was a show that not very many people saw. It didn't get a lot of traction. We only filmed one season, but it did air. So that's pretty cool to have that under my belt. So, you know, when I I recorded it when I was 21 years old, an, an MTV show. So I feel like that's a pretty pretty awesome achievement, whether it really like went anywhere or not. Like, who cares? But um, that's how I know Zach first from the internet, and then from our TV show, and we've just kept in touch and. You know, he went on to being in the new Jackass Forever, which is really fucking cool. I'm, I'm proud of him. Stoked for him. So, yeah. So, did you ever get to meet any of the other member of the Jackass cast? I have, yeah. I've met nearly all of them except Bam. And, of course, I, I didn't get to meet Ryan because he, he passed away before I could ever get a chance to meet him. But I've met all of them except uh, Bam because... Um, the way I was able meet the way I was able to meet all of them was at the Jackass Forever premiere. Uh, Zach got me a ticket to the to the premiere at the I think it's the Man's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. And there was an after party, and we all got to hang out and and chat. And 
I didn't get to mingle with all the guys as much as I'd like just because there were so many people, but I did get to like shake everybody's hand and introduce myself, got pictures with some of them. Some of them I didn't get pictures with because I didn't want to be that guy that was just going around to every fucking person to, hey, can I get a selfie? Although I should have because like when's another chance I'm going to have to like have everybody in the same room. Like I got to meet, meet Eric Andre, you know, Chris Pontius, Johnny Knoxville, Danger Aaron. I've met Dave England before. I've met Wee Man before. I've met uh, Preston before, but I, I said hi to them again. It's not like I'm besties with the guys. You know, the funny thing is Steve-O was not at the premiere because he apparently he had COVID. So yeah, he tested positive. Yeah. Yeah. So he couldn't make it, which is just like super strange. But uh, his fiance was there. And uh, I, I know Lux and uh, Scott. I know Scott a lot better. His uh, his podcast partner and, and sober companion. So that was cool. That was quite an experience. <laughs> um being around like all these people that i lo looked up to like for most of my childhood and adulthood even so trying to like keep it cool and not come off as like such a fanboy <laughs> you know just like good nice to meet you love your work like even though inside i'm like freaking the fuck out <laughs> like these are like people i i, I really admire but well it's funny because i've had um I'm trying to think i know two people in my personal life that have met Steve-O. Um, mm. Both of them had, well, one of them didn't meet Steve-O. He, he worked at MTV and he was always in close proximity to Steve-O. Never got to meet him though. Never like said anything to him, I should say. Um, I know one person that's met Wee Man and I know another person that did meet Steve-O and he had a conversation with him um, and he saw his dog and everything too. And he was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm happy. Like, or he's basically talked about sobriety. He was like, oh, you know, I'm happy that you're sober. Like, it's a really big accomplishment. And Steve was like, it's the hardest thing I ever did. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think. But, and that was cool. Um, I try to think. Was, that, I don't, in, was like, that in California when he saw, when your buddies saw him? Or was that? No, it was, was in, it was in uh, New York, actually. Oh, nice. Which Steve doesn't often go to New York, I don't think. But he, but I think, but, um. It was like, uh, it was my, I'm not really like close with this person as much anymore, but it was my friend's dad. Like he met him in New York and he just said hi, uh, which was very cool. But you know, yeah, I never met him though, personally, mm -hmm. but everything I hear is always very good, very positive. And my cousin's also a very big fan of his too. Like I got him into jackass and stuff. Cause I think it was a year or two ago. I started getting into it during COVID. Like I, mm. I watched it and I'm like, Oh, this guy's really funny. Like this guy's really cool. He seems like a very warm personality. I started watching his podcast and recently I got very into the Sal Volcano podcast that he did, but I don't, you know, less about him now and transitioning more into what you've done. You're right. Good. You were saying, so you were saying about Houston Jones and the difference between your work and his work. Mm. I mean, there's a few differences. We both the similarities. We both do stuff that hurt ourselves. Like that's the one thing I feel like a lot of mine can be, there's a, like a 50, 50 chance that I'll get hurt. You know, sometimes like the barbed wire, it's like, I know what I'm getting myself into. You know, this dude's like, just like using his like his, his thing is like the human punching bag right so it's a lot of just like throwing shit shooting shit at his at his thighs for the most part i know he'll do other parts of his body um it is kind of weird how there's like this like jockey kind of like gym bro vibe with this guy and i get that's how well, he's, he's probably able to, yeah yeah, he's a bodybuilder. That's how he's probably able to take a lot of these hits. I'm not saying I would be able to or not. And I'm sure he has like a strong mind, clearly. Also, it's like I started filming like like stunt stuff, backyard stunt stuff in 2011. This is before Instagram was like a thing, like right before or maybe right when it was going to be. But for the first few years on Instagram, you couldn't upload videos even. So like I, I see a lot of these dudes who do like dumb shit on the internet and it just feels like that one quick clip but back in the day we would we would save up footage to make like one like conglomerate like movie or like 30 minute short or whatever like or just like it felt like there was more to it 
but I do admire like the quality of what he's doing. It, it is good quality he films with like super slow mo cameras. Um, he's dedicated. It just like it, it is different with him and and many other people that are like mostly on Instagram. And I know he has a YouTube channel as well. It it's just not quite the same, and it's it's kind of hard to explain. But it's like okay, try to put steve-o like it is what steve-o and houston jones do similar or at all like really the same maybe a couple similarities but it's it's not really and that's kind of like how i i would identify with like comparing houston and i dude's gnarly probably a super nice guy i we probably could create like super cool fish together i actually not to talk shit, but i respect houston jones more than i do that other dude cold cuts on on instagram you know the the scooter guy who he takes like the bowling ball nut shots like at the skate park where he'll do like this the shinners on purpose with the scooters they recently did like a collab and not that i like respect or don't respect people but you get when you get compared to a lot of the times like oh kyler you should do this or like look what this guy did it's like it's not the same and but it's, it's whatever i just feels like there's a there's a different level of like passion or integrity that goes along with like with what i'm doing and for how long i've been doing it versus some of these other people but i don't know people some people find their niche and they really stick with it like houston being the human punching bag or this other dude taking a million fucking scooter shin shots i'm just like that i guess that's that guy's thing for the most part um my thing as of lately has been like jumping into trees which i've been doing for 13 years now it's just something that i've like always really liked to do but i will do like tons of other like either like really gross stuff really painful stuff really like funny like or like fucked up things or super dangerous try to like have like a wide variety of like stupid things to film but yeah um I don't know. I, I guess I, sh I guess I shouldn't really like throw any shade because I've never met uh, Sir Houston. So there just is a difference. Um, and that's that's cool that we're different. You know, like I'm, that, there's plenty of things that he does that I couldn't or wouldn't do and vice versa with like, you know, that, and that's with our strong suits and what we could bring to the table. Well, I think also a lot of Houston stuff has a lot more to do with like gross out to some extent because he has one where Okay, I don't know if you know this, but sugar-free gummy bears, I guess the the way that they're made is to see It'll make sugar. you shit. Yeah, right. It'll make it's like laxatives basically. Yeah, yeah. Um and he would eat like a full bowl of them, like a pound of them, and then he would have to do a squat. And right, right, right. right and it's like, oh, how can you hold your your it's bowels? Like it's like a challenge. He's doing like the challenge videos, and that's like yeah, a, a but he also, challenge. Right. But he also does stuff where it has a lot to do with also like his internal chemistry, if that makes sense. Like where he'll eat a hundred milligrams of weed edibles and then he'll try to complete tasks that he right. could complete perfectly fine when he was sober or, and you know, that's a really, that's, that's pretty thing interesting. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. That's probably like more on his like long format YouTube videos. Right. It's like, I right. don't see that pop up much on like my Instagram feed. So well, cause yeah, that's where I know him from. I know him from his YouTube and I've seen his, videos where it's like he'll take airsoft guns and he'll just shoot it at his you know and himself or paintball guns and see oh what could give me the biggest bruise his you i would recommend watching his youtube videos because they're a right lot he, more he, he tries to make it like more like um scientific or like experimental kind of uh, like yeah like what would happen like because again he's a bodybuilder so he'll squat and then he'll eat a bunch of laxatives beforehand to see if like he'll take a dump while he's squatting right yeah, yeah. or um you know airsoft snipers like right at him or you know like you're saying almost like scientific or he'll get punched a hundred times in the same spot i'm looking at it now um right. or get shot with a blow gun well you got shot with a blow gun too through the nose yeah right? yeah 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 i that's i've been shot a lot but yeah that's one through the nose that like really stands out how did that uh, work uh perfectly i feel like the the hard part was getting it out it was really stuck in there trying to like wrench that out of there um that was just for like a random video that we were shooting 
Uh, I shot my friend through the tongue with the blow dart gun, and then he shot me through the nose. We were just giving each other different blow dart piercings. But no, like there are very like a lot of similarities. Yeah, with like everything you're naming, like w- what we've done with like I've played with airsoft guns, paintball guns, you know, hitting each other. But he's adding more of like scientific results. Like what would happen if I did it this this way, which is a great spin on it. And that's probably how he's able to like monetize a lot of his videos. Cause I'm out here just like looking like a psychopath doing this for God knows why, like for no reason at all. Like, why would you do that? And then he's adding like something of a reason, like, okay, I'm doing it to see what would give me the biggest bruise, uh, airsoft paintball, fucking bazooka, whatever. Like what it would happen if I did it on certain drugs or off certain drugs or whatever. So I do, I like that actually, like that variability and like, that's his own twist on it which is like why he's so successful so bravo are there any okay are there any stunts that you've sworn off of that you will not do one the first one that comes to mind is getting pepper sprayed i hated that so much that was not fun not fun at all the worst part about getting pepper sprayed for me was not being able to breathe properly that's pretty scary like my eyes burning that sucked your skin burns pretty shitty but once you start to feel like you can't breathe that's like when in like panic can start to set in and then that makes you like hyperventilate and not be able to breathe even worse so that's not something i really want to fuck with ever again and it's been over a decade since i've last ever sprayed myself and i've done a lot of things where i'm like i don't want to do that again but after enough time you forget how bad sorry you forget how bad it was and you try it again you're like oh yeah that's why i hate that because it fucking sucks and you have to like remind yourself but pepper spray i will not forget how bad i hated that (laughs) that's the first one that comes to mind what's the most painful stunt that you've ever done Mm, the most painful stunt that i've ever done flatlining in the hospital from a stunt gone wrong that hurt pretty fucking bad um but i would say as the most recent probably jumping into that pine tree and landing on the fence had like the most prolonged pain because there's a lot of stunts that hurt pretty bad in the moment but then you give it a few moments and the pain's gone right like you're you're fine but when i jumped through that tree and landed on that fence you know my balls were bruised for a couple of weeks my spine didn't feel right for about a month my my elbow still sometimes gives me grief my leg hurt for about a month you know i was just like in quite a lot of pain but surprisingly didn't break anything i didn't have to go to the hospital i, I was somehow able to walk it off but it was a very painful uh walk it off so, and that's one I would I would never attempt that tree jump ever again. There's a few spots that I've gone back to over the years to jump into again or add something else. Like I I've lit myself on fire and jumped into the same tree and like done a front flip and did that the same spot or dressed up as Santa Claus. You know, it's kind of like a reoccurring spot like location. But that one, yeah, I got really lucky that I didn't fucking die on that one or uh become a paraplegic and just like how everything happened landing nuts first on a chain link fence sounds pretty bad but i think at the end of the day it kind of like it saved me from something even worse happening um but i've done a lot of really painful things man like putting a thumbtack through my fingernail or staple through my fingernail that that doesn't feel very good whatsoever um i mean mouse trap to the dick doesn't ever really feel terribly great <laughs> um rat trap to the tongue that one hurt pretty good it sounds basic but i i recently filmed this with a uh, legendary shot so the super slow motion guy and we we did the the rat trap to the tip of my tongue and it like cut my tongue up and like swelled up pretty bad that that sucked but i don't know man every like a lot of like pain stunts kind of blend together you kind of forget until you like go back to that memory like oh yeah that sucked a lot of shit sucks like i did a pain uh, a bb gun into my nose point blank and it like went through one of my nostrils and out the other side like that fucking hurts pretty bad <laughs>
are there any stunts that you haven't done but have sworn off of? Mm. Mm. That's a good question. Like, ooh, that I've already like pre sworn, but I've never done it. I don't know if there's ever, if there's been a stunt that I'm like, I will never do that. I mean, sure, there's plenty of things like, I don't know, like like wingsuits. I don't even know how to like like how to skydive or base jump. And like, if I were to just go and do like a wingsuit, I would fucking die. Like, but that's totally different. Like, that's like Red Bull. Like, fucking, I'm not to that level yet. Although I'd love to learn how to base jump and skydive. Um, things that I've like sworn off before I've ever attempted. I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe fucking with bulls. I like that, that. That's not really something that like terribly interests me. But I, I don't know if I've ever like sworn it off. But there's definitely things that I'm like, I'm good on that. But I don't. I, I don't know if I'm presented with the opportunity in certain moments with certain people around me. I could probably be easily persuaded. You know what I mean? So that, right, that's kind of like Evo. Like, yeah, it's like. I feel like nothing's off the table. A lot of things that I do, almost everything is like a very calculated risk. I'm almost like a hypochondriac when it comes to like stunts. I really like overthink shit. I'm like, okay, what could happen if this goes wrong? If this goes wrong, like how do I prevent this from happening? Or how do I make this go right? What do I want to like really focus on here so I don't die or become paralyzed or, you know, find the least path of resistance? Or if I want to get hurt, if sometimes the objective is to get hurt, how do I get hurt safely? You know, how do I make it look fucked up, but walk away? And it's like, there is like a science to it. Sometimes things are just instinctual. Sometimes, you know, like it just comes naturally on like how I would like roll out of something, but like getting hit by a car, you know, that's not something I look forward to every time I do it, but I've been hit by a car four times in my life going in be anywhere between 15 and 20 miles per hour and that's always absolutely terrifying um it's a great rush the footage looks cool but it's scary as hell and like there's a lot of risk for injury in in those types of stunts so and this is relating to the scariest part you mentioned earlier and i should have asked about this earlier but you yeah, said yeah. you flatlined at the hospital after getting a stun gun to your chest oh. No, no, no. A stunt gone wrong. Sorry. So okay, I, so I want not 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 yeah. stun gun. I okay, flatlined I in the hospital. No, no, no. I've I've played with like the hand stun guns plenty of times. Those are fine. Like those are whatever. I've never been shot with a police taser, like the shoot. No, a stunt went wrong. And over the course of a few hours, I bled internally and flatlined in the hospital. Luckily they were able to give me a few chest compressions, get my heart started, and then had to go into emergency surgery. But the stunt that, I, I would never recreate this stunt again, but I, I duct taped a bunch of those fluorescent light tubes to my back, like about eight of them. And then I, I rode a bicycle into a, a rope and I clotheslined myself on my neck and then landed on my back onto the onto the glass light tubes i wasn't going terribly fast but it's it's a stunt i've done before without the glass where i just i rode like a bike into a rope close on myself land on my back it looks fucked up it kind of hurts i thought i was just gonna land on my back on the glass and it would break into little pieces i'd get little cuts as that happens you know I, i've done it multiple times um jumping off roofs through through glass and stuff. You get cut, but it's not life-threatening usually. But this time, one of the, the light tubes broke uh, before I hit the ground. And so I'm falling onto my back and there's a, a broken spear basically taped to my back. So when I hit the ground, the light tube just goes through my back and into my lung, cutting an artery. And I'm just slowly bleeding to death. And I had no idea. I, I go immediately to the hospital. You know, we're picking glass out of my back. I'm bleeding profusely. I'm able to walk myself into the hospital. We do an MRI, x-rays. They're like, well, it looks like you have glass in your lung and like all the in your in your chest cavity. We're gonna we're gonna have an ambulance pick you up from here. We can't do this type of surgery. You're gonna have to go 20 minutes to a different hospital. They take their sweet time. 
I go to the next hospital. They have to do all that other shit over again. X-ray, MRI, yada, yada. And they're like, we'll do surgery in the morning. You'll be fine. You just, uh, your lungs a little cut up, but it should clot on its own and you'll be okay for surgery in the morning. We'll go in and take out all the glass. But they didn't know that I had an artery that was cut. That was just filling my whole lung up with blood. I couldn't breathe. You know, with with each moment that passed, it was harder and harder to breathe. And next thing I know, I'm sitting there. They're giving me every drug in the book to help with the pain, and nothing's working. And it's getting harder to breathe. The next thing I know, I, I, I everybody's face is starting to go blurry in the in the hospital room. I'm starting to get really hot and sick feeling. I start to feel like I have to to piss. You know, like when you when you die or when you, whatever you, your bowels go, and I'm I'm saying all this out loud, like I don't feel good, and I I hit the emergency button in the hospital bed, and, and next thing you know, everything goes black, everything just kind of faded to black. What, however long went by, whether it was thirty seconds or a couple of minutes, I'm not sure. I, I wake back up, and there's a doctor above me, and all my friends are out in the hallway, and the doctor looked at me and was like, you know. We, we lost you there for a second. You know, your heart stopped beating. Uh, and I was just kind of, I was confused. And I was like, did I just fucking die? I don't know if I said fucking, but I was like, in my head, I'm like, did I just die? He's like, no, 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 you didn't die. Your heart just stopped beating. Well, we, we, we gave you some chest compressions and we got, you didn't have enough blood to, to pump. You know, like my, my heart was dried out. It didn't have any, any more blood to like, to keep itself moving. So they had to, to kickstart it back and they gave me a blood transfusion, which fucking sucked. Catheter in the dick, like all this while I'm still awake and aware. They just put me on ketamine, which is a crazy trip to be on, on ketamine, have a catheter shoved down my dick, getting somebody else's blood pumped through my system. I'm fucking shaking profusely because it's fucking cold, like fresh out the blood fridge. So that was quite quite the experience and um all the doctors and nurses afterwards you know thank you for saving my life but they were all like so are you done after this are you gonna quit doing stupid shit and i told them all no like i'm thanks for saving me but no i'm, I'm not done yet i was only 23 at the time i don't even know if i was 23 yet it was like a couple months before my 23rd birthday so like, nah i'm i'm not done not done yet but i'll definitely keep Keep that in mind. I'm not going to be doing that kind of stunt again. <laughs> Sorry for these long-winded responses. I, I tend to chat a lot. I don't know if that's no, like it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I, I I'm fascinated though. It's that's cool. Um, so how did that how did that feel though? I guess like because I I don't I don't know what it's like to be shot or stabbed. So when you got stabbed, what did that actually feel like? Initially, when I got stabbed through the back with the light tube, is what you're asking? Um, so when I initially got stabbed, the first feeling was like the wind got knocked out of me because I did fall onto my back kind of hard, but I also got stabbed simultaneously. But it felt different than I like normally. I'm like, oh, like, like it just felt like just something got taken out of me. Like I, like I couldn't breathe properly almost immediately. Like uh, I just got, I don't know, it, it is hard to describe. I could feel where i got stabbed but the hole was over here right so i was like guys take the glass out of my back on the left side and they're all like looking at me like uh there's nothing on the left side it's the holes on the right side of your back and it went diagonally into my left part of my body and i could feel like stuff inside of me on that left side and so it, it was like a, a phantom pain that like nobody could see i'm like can you guys you know help me out and uh like no this is bad this is a deep this is a deep cut um it definitely doesn't feel good man that was a very painful experience i don't know if i lost a lot of blood right away but i remember on my car ride uh to the hospital everything got very bright there it was very everything was very uh i was sensitive to the light my hearing started to like kind of ring I, I felt like i was hyperventilating like i couldn't breathe maybe i was having a panic attack or maybe i was just losing a lot of blood going into shock but uh, that was a very scary and like fucked up experience over a stunt that like shouldn't have gone that wrong. Honestly, it was pretty like it should have been way more mild than that. But yeah, the the initial like feeling of getting stabbed, I just remember it felt like I got the wind knocked out of me. 
but could never regain that full breath of air. You know, like it was just like, at least for that, because it hit my lung. So, right. Well, I had an uncle who his lung collapsed, and he he was it was it was kind of bad because he was laying right next to his wife, and then all of a sudden he said it was like a balloon just popped inside of him. Right. Luckily, that's fucked up. And luckily, my lung never collapsed. So there's there's a sac around your lung that's still part of your lung that the glass hit and it, it broke through that like uh, protective layer of the lung. I don't know if there was stuff inside of it, but luckily my, my lung never like fully collapsed. It got filled completely with blood, but I've never had that experience, uh, which sounds awful, but continue. Well, he was just right next to his wife or my aunt, I should say. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're like laying right next to each other and they're just looking at each other. Like not not calling, they were just like looking at each other. And next thing he knows, all of a sudden it was just like, oh, and like he he just had like this tremendous pain where he again he felt like it was a balloon that popped inside of him. My aunt thought he was having a heart attack. So obviously they go to the hospital and stuff, and it was not a good hospital either. Right. Yeah. And like like they weren't washing things properly. He almost got in fact I think he did get an infection at one point, but either way, Jesus. um uh what's it called he did his lung collapsed and it was just not a fun experience for him because you know he well he used to be a smoker too but when he went to the, the hospital i was gonna like, say yeah. what happened like what caused that like what i would imagine well, he was a smoker but but the interesting thing is that when he went to the hospital the surgeon when they put him under surgery they said that it probably had nothing like everybody wants to blame everything on cigarettes, but he's like, but yours, you haven't been smoking for so long that had really nothing to do with cigarettes or smoking. And I mean, doctors can be right. wrong, but it's interesting that because that's the first time I've ever heard a doctor not blame it on smoking where he's not immediately right. like, Oh yeah. Well, he, had, he, wasn't a, he wasn't smoking at the time, right? He had quit for years, you said, or yeah. for a while. Right. Exactly. And that was what was so, like interesting about it and the fact that the doctor made a comment about it too but i mean getting your lung collapse and my aunt thought he was having a heart attack too which was the scary yeah. part right right because right when, when all of a sudden you're you know gasping for air and your chest isn't working properly yeah and, it sounds like a heart know, attack it, and it probably would feel like that too but it was just all from his he kind of explained it too like as if you got punched really really hard in the stomach right? just all your wind leaves you Mm -hmm. and it's a very strange feeling and people that i know not personally but stories i've heard too it's like people that will vape like a lot you know mainly kids and stuff they'll vape and then they'll get like a double lung collapse right Jesus christ that's a double lung collapse that sounds awful bro just from vaping too mm -hmm. wow i i've actually recently quit vaping and um every once in a while i'll i'll if a friend has it, if it's around, I'll hit it. But like, I haven't bought one in a while and like, it's a fucked up habit. It's definitely uh, not good for you. Super addictive though. And I can see like how kids would just like do nothing but fucking vape all day. Cause that's kind of like what my experience was. I was never much of like a cigarette smoker. I used to be a heavy drinker. So like addiction is kind of like runs in my blood, you know, with like the addiction for it adrenaline and attention is like very obvious but um i yeah i don't know that that sounds really gnarly and like did they ever find out what happened why his lung collapsed your uncle like they don't know why it just there's a freak act well it, it, yeah and i mean that's the scary part for because you know aneurysms heart attacks strokes and right. uh, your lung collapsing it's kind of most people don't think of your lung collapsing as one of those but it's it unfortunately as unlikely as it is and as rare as it is, it does happen. More to smokers, yes. Even ex-smokers, though. Yeah, a lot of ex-smokers, too, because it's so much lung damage. But right. the fact that all of a sudden he was laying in bed and he felt perfectly fine, and then all of a sudden he just gets like the wind knocked out of him and he can't breathe and he feels like he's having a heart attack, and they find that it's just his lung just popped, right, like a balloon. And I wonder if like that's like a lack of exercise. Right, like I wonder if like 
he's not getting enough deep breaths, not like moving around as much. So his lungs not really being like fully inflated and like being used much. So just, I don't know, like that, I, that doesn't mean it makes sense. Cause that is super strange and random. Like you said, like a brain aneurysm or heart attack or stroke. I mean, those all have reasons why they happen, but I, I mean, my dad had a, a seizure quite a few years ago, his first and only seizure that he's ever had. The doctors had no idea why it happened. It was just a random, like a, epilepsy doesn't run in the family. You know, it's like, that's just like sometimes f like freak accidents happen like that. But yeah, I mean, he's not like a super in shape guy by any means, but he's also <laughs> not like extremely unhealthy either. It's right. There's more unhealthy people walking around with perfectly fine lungs probably. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, unfortunately, very recently, one of my uncles actually did die. Um, and he had, when he, he suffered a stroke, I think. It was either a heart attack or a stroke. But he was in the car, right? And while was he happened, driving? Yes. Luckily, nobody else got hurt. But it's a really, like, scary thing because it just happened. Like, he was perfectly fine. Though he like he's a little bit more he was a little bit more unhealthy though. And the sad thing is like he was starting to like try and lose weight and stuff, but I guess it was too late. But yeah, it's when your like your heart and stuff like that, that's that's never fun. No, right? dude. Fuck no. Hey, uh sorry. Do you mind if I go to the bathroom real quick? I just have to pee. I've been drinking a lot of water today, but I'm yeah. down to continue this interview. I don't know if you want to stop recording and then pick it back up or you can keep recording and like cut it and edit it. Cut it down. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just gonna pee real quick. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Yep. That was I'll like the longest up. pee of my life. No, that was that was really short actually. <laughs> that was only a minute. It's all right. What I was gonna say earlier, uh way earlier when i didn't get back to you from your email i like literally didn't see it i have two different emails that i use because i just get so much spam from over the years and so it's like good thing you followed up because then it popped back up it was like, oh hey what's up and like i'm down yeah. i'm not like not down it's just like completely yeah. like over my head yeah don't so. worry about it is this <laughs> the first podcast you've done or no no Definitely. I've done a few. Uh, I've done a couple like this, like random like Zoom interview podcasts. Um, I've done like friends podcasts, like my buddy Zach has a podcast. I did this other dude's podcast in LA. Like I haven't done like a shit ton of them, but uh, I'm not really where the podcasts are at. There's not a lot of people in Utah doing podcasts. And like typically, I don't typically want to do like Zoom podcasts and a lot of other people don't like to do them as well but i figured like i'm not doing anything better might as well um why do i come off as like uh like a like a noob no no not at all no it's just what's it called because some of the people that i do podcasts with it's either people that go on a lot of podcasts or like this is the first time they've done it right, and it's right. like it's rarely like because your circumstances a mix of both where it's like you don't go on them often but you do because right, right. mm -hmm. some of, yeah because some of the guys i have on are just super generous with their time other people are like they they've wow. been on no podcasts at all and they're big youtubers which will feel very special but also very funny like i mm -hmm. you're the second stunt guy i've had on so i've had this kid he's like a year younger than or not a year younger than me like a little bit younger than me um mm -hmm. i actually tried contacting scott to ask uh i because he has like steve-o's wild ride like his email like for his youtube channel is scott's email and as <laughs> i did the interview with the kid i was like hey you know you should try and contact steve-o like go on his show because his kid is like 16 17 i think he just turned 17 which is also my age and he does these crazy motorbike stunts where he will you know he'll do like a a flip while on a bike sort of thing right like classic mm -hmm. daredevil sort of things um never anything with heights nothing like what steve or you do but it's just like that's what he does right just very thrilling mm -hmm. sort of things and or handstand on a bike like that's going 20 kilometers an hour right okay. cool thing yeah. Yeah, yeah and i was like hey if you want i'll reach out to him you know no promise but then he'll go, he's like all right sure he lives in south africa too which is pretty cool but okay. yeah 
Um, I don't know if you've actually ever seen him. His name is a uh, Wheelie Feed. Uh, I, I mean, I might have seen stuff like pop up. I, the name doesn't sound terribly familiar. Um, yeah. Maybe I don't know. Like, what are some other like viral? Like, does he have like viral videos that I might like have seen? Yeah. Um, his most viral video is on Instagram. It had like four point five million views. Um, nice. he himself has something like one hundred ninety six thousand followers. Like, he's a he's a decently big instagram guy um i don't know he has like 10k on tiktok he's not really as big on tiktok but um TikTok's tough man especially with like anything dangerous tiktok that your videos immediately get removed but yeah that that's what i heard from him he was saying the mm-hmm. same thing that it's yeah. impossible to get anything done on tiktok it's I mean, pretty it's hard. all right yeah fuck it yeah I, I i gave up on tiktok after my account got deleted so whatever it's all right yeah <laughs> so in terms of looking to the future where are you seeing yourself in five years um i would like to have like a steady career on uh making money doing stunt videos whether it's hollywood or like backyard youtube stuff but like having like a team and like making steady content And, like, be able to, like, make a living and pay my bills. And, you know, I probably will have to move to L.A. for that. That's just, like, that's a big leap. I do like it here. There's lots of space in Salt Lake to be able to do this sort of thing. L.A. is kind of congested. But in five years, I do hope to see myself myself continuing this path of doing dangerous and crazy stunts. And I'm hoping that it's a full-time career. Because right now, it's, it's still a struggle. Um, you know, I, I get paid gigs here and there and, you know, it does pay off sometimes, but I want it to be light years away from where I'm at now to where I'm, I'm able to travel more and, uh, and make a solid living, uh, doing what I do. So who knows where exactly that will be? Like if I'm, if I do end up moving to LA or if I'm able to stick around in Salt Lake or if I'm able to have that, that team on my back to help, but uh, I'm hoping I'm still alive. I guess that's the best answer. Is I hope I'm to to entertain the masses. That's the hope. Hopefully someday yeah. you're, you're 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 old like Steve-O. Yeah, right. I I had a an English teacher that told me, Kyler, I hope you live to the ripe age of thirty. You know, I was sixteen when he told me that because like I was making my stunt videos in high school. I would show it to my classmates like in class because we'd some have sometimes have days where like at the the last 30 minutes of class the teacher would be like all right we're just gonna mess around like anybody have like some appropriate youtube videos that they want to show the class or whatever you know like any anything that comes to mind and so i would show the class like my stunt videos and everybody's just like baffled even like the teachers were like holy shit like don't die kid and so i'm almost 30 now i'm, I'm 28 so fingers crossed <laughs> That's the hope. And I mean, look, hopefully you can grow this even more than because you're already doing pretty good. Like you're doing a lot better than 99 percent of people are with your videos. You know, you're not stuck at a thousand views by any means, which is good. Right. And I'm happy right, for right. You, you, you know, and you have a decent following. And from what you're saying, like you have people that come up to you in public. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's good. Like I, I've definitely had like successes here and there and I, my videos are doing well um it's just like shit after 13 years i'm not like where i thought i would be with it but like nothing ever goes as planned so i think just sticking with it keeping the dream alive that's better than quitting because then i'll definitely get nowhere if i just give up so yeah you miss 100 uh, percent of the shots you don't take exactly so just, just stick with it man and i feel like all no matter what good things happen, as long as you you keep pursuing what it is that makes you happy or whatever it is that you want to do with life, it might take you over a decade. But just like as long as you don't give up, like cool shit will happen. You'll meet cool people. Um, so who knows, man? I, I hope to I just hope to be making cool people with cool or making cool videos with cool people. So that, that's my dream. That's the hope. Do you mm-hmm. plan on having kids at all or getting married or I don't plan on it, but you never know what could happen. Uh, like I don't 
I don't feel like I would be, I would be ready to have kids anytime soon. I'm not ready to get married. Like I do have a girlfriend, but and she's very supportive, but I don't really like see myself following that like regular cookie cutter lifestyle. Just like not just not in my cards, I don't think. But you never know. Like who maybe in five years I do want kids or I do end up having kids and I, I can still do what I want to do. You know, a lot of those like Knoxville and those guys did have kids and were able to make the jackass movies. Um I don't know. I, I feel like I would be a good a good dad, but it just that sounds like a lot of work that I'm not ready to commit to yet. You never know. I mean, it might happen. Who knows? Who knows? It's weird. I'm at the age that my dad was now when he had me. So, and I mean, I guess he, I don't know if he was ready to have me, but I definitely am not ready to have another little, little Kyler running around. <laughs> Kyler Jr. Kyler Jr. Good God. I, I mean, that would be my karma to have a kid that does what I do because like, I know I've put my parents through hell and back just with like, they support what I do, but it's definitely nerve wracking to watch their own kid, their firstborn kid do like life threatening things, you know? So, I mean, if I had a kid that wanted to do stunts, I would be stoked, but I'd want them to, to be safe as fuck. Cause like, that's, that is really scary. You know, like, even when I watch like my brothers or close friends doing stunts, like it's cool, but I'm like, please don't get hurt. Like, I don't want to see anybody like die. You know what I mean? Or like go to the hospital. Like I want to see crazy stuff, but not like life ruining injuries. That's, that's awful. Oh yeah. I, I, I didn't turn my mic on. I was going to say it's a miracle that the Jagass cast, like, uh, I mean, most of the cast even, I think it was Knoxville, he was saying, like, they almost didn't want to do a Jackass Forever, like a Jackass 4, because they had already had the perfect career, right? They had already gotten away with it all. So Yeah. If they did one more movie, and it ended off with one of them being paralyzed, that would not be a happy ending to anybody's story. Right? Yeah, no, right. That would, that would be so shitty if that happened. I mean, I'm glad they pulled it off, and they were able to, like, recruit some help with some of the other some of the younger other guys but i i don't imagine them being able to do a jackass five but they did just like hire these new kids to come on to like help carry some of the weight so like that would make sense to continue making more jackass movies or if they picked up like another tv show with like some of the new dudes or if they like hired even more new people but yeah, that that would suck to like taint that legacy. You know, you had you had a perfect career. Nobody died other than Ryan from you know drunk driving. Rest in peace. But they definitely got lucky as fuck with so many things. Like especially the things that involved animals, like like sharks and and tigers and snakes. Like especially with Wild Boys, I loved Wild Boys. That was like probably one of my like favorite TV shows. Like that was a really like fun feel good show for me because I grew up. I loved Steve Irwin and like Animal Planet. Got older, loved Jackass, Viva La Bam. So Wild Boys was like that perfect mix of of both of those worlds. So yeah, man. It was just like I, the goal isn't to die young, so hopefully that doesn't happen. But can't predict the future. Where, yeah, where did speaking of which, how did your bio come about here for a bad time, not a long time? I literally saw that on somebody's t-shirt and thought it was cool and thought it was funny. And I was like, that's me. I'm not actually, you know what? Like, whatever. It's just a big rip off. But I like that mantra. Like, I'm here because it's so cliche here for a good time, not a long time. YOLO. It's like, well, what I do is pretty fucked up and not, I would say 99% of the population would not want to be doing what I do. Whatever I put myself through, most people wouldn't see that as like their idea of fun, right? Like putting a nail through the that part of your body or jumping on a rail nuts first or jumping into pine trees, et cetera, et cetera. Probably doesn't sound like that much fun or like ideal. It's more of a bad time. So here for a bad time, not a long time. So I, I don't know. Maybe I'll change it to a uh, all balls, no brain, because that's kind of like another slogan I've uh, adopted recently. 
but I, I don't know, man. It is a miracle that I'm still around for sure. Yeah, man. I mean, again, just whatever you do, do not end up dead you know, or paralyzed. Fingers crossed. I'm, I, I do my best to be safe and to not get put in those situations. So, well, because, yeah, I mean, that would just be the worst case scenario if, you know, again, because. I don't want to say you're like one of the jackass crew, right? But like, if you were like one of them, right? Because they, their whole thing was like, they did it for 20 years, if not more at this point. Mm -hmm. And out of all the things that they did, none of them ever died or got long term severe injuries. Yes, there were things here and there that did stick, like, you know, Knoxville. Knoxville. Yeah, like he, he had the one. Um, but even Steve, like when he went to the MRI, um, I think one of his more recent videos, like they didn't see anything that wrong with him, which is pretty crazy. That's miraculous. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah. That seems so unlikely. I believe it, but I'm just saying like, like that's so like lucky just from the years of drug abuse and stunts like combined, like the fact that his brain came out like normal or like healthy is like, wow, you are lucky as hell. Cause like there's like athletes that are, NFL stars for five years, 10 years and get horrible CTE, you know, and that, 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 that's not good. Like I, I do fear sometimes that I might have that or develop CTE when I get older. It's definitely something to like, think about wear helmet kids. Just don't do dumb shit. How about, well, I think Steve-O also, he only got injuries every once in a while where you could be arguing that athletes like football players do it all the time, all day, every day, and they're just banging into each other, whereas right. Steve-O is just doing it every – he's just doing something kind of crazy every so often, right? Right. Like, even in his prime, like, party stage, the I think, funny enough, I think his like his drug habits of staying up all night and breathing in not, nothing but I, nitrous and coke would be like probably a lot more damaging to your brain than the concussions. Yeah, yeah, the nitrous for sure. When, when that's all that you're breathing, he, you know, he'd go however many minutes at a time, just just, just only breathing in nitrous. That's got to kill so many brain cells. But you're right with like football players. It's like a everyday constant. Like it's like a like a like a trickle effect, you know, you're, even if it's like minor, like headbutting, it's every day. And you're, you're just getting that constant, like head trauma every day, just a little bit at a time that'll build up m equally or more than the occasional, like hard hit, like Steve-O Knoxville or I would take, you know, like e even some of these other like extreme athletes, like skateboarders or, or motocross riders or whatever. But yeah, man, it's, it's a dangerous business out there, <laughs> but it's pretty fun. I, I'm just like curious how long I can keep it up and how long my body's going to hold up. Cause right now I feel fine. I feel good. I'm, I am like making a conscious effort now in my life to stay healthy and exercise and meditate. And I'm just aware of like where I'm at, um, to, to prolong, uh, the ability to make videos. So we'll see. A lot of people like to joke, like, dude, you're, you're going to end up in a wheelchair by the time you're 40 or like, you're not, you know, you're going to, you're going to die soon or you're, you're just not going to be able to walk at like a very young age. But I mean, you look at Knoxville and Steve-O and a lot of those guys and they seem perfectly fine, but they, I would imagine they take care of themselves on top of everything, you know, stay active. It's important. Right. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, I mean, in general, I mean, you could always look at the best case scenario. For example, Bill Gates, you know, dropped out of college, or more exactly, where he dropped out of college. That's the best case scenario, right? That yeah. everyone looks to, for example, you know, and you could look to Steve-O and say, well, he's doing pretty good, but who knows? I mean, I, I do wish you the best. You know, I'm not going to say, be like, don't do that, but I do wish you the best. Um, Yeah, I mean, any any final thoughts or anything like that? Anything you want to say to the audience? Any advice you want to give to young people? Any advice? Uh, just just don't give up. Um, 
keep the keep the dream alive, man. And and good shit will happen. I promise. No matter what, just just stick it through. Uh, we we want you around. So when times get tough, uh, don't give up. That's all I gotta say. All right, man. I'm gonna stop the recording. We'll talk a little bit after the show. But that was that was good. All right. Adios. Adios.